Hello, this is Sim Racing Corner. I have a 3D printed uh, Sim Racing quick release to show you in this video. Uh, this model was downloaded from Thingiverse and there's a link in the description. Um, I've wondered whether a 3D printed quick release can stand up to a direct drive motor and we're going to find out today. So lay down your bets right now before we spin the wheel. With such a monumental task at hand, this has been printed at 100% infill. Uh, the filament used is bog standard PLA. There's three individual parts, the base side, the wheel side and uh, this retention ring. Right off the bat, the piece is slotted together with near perfection. As you would expect, uh, there is a small amount of slack between the pieces, um, but as you can see, it's quite minimal. The retention ring is meant to squeeze the quick release together for a firm connection between the base and the wheel. Um, even before printing this part, um, I wasn't convinced it was going to do anything uh, useful and um, I was right. Uh, PLA is pretty hard stuff and the retention ring did nothing, um, but it was worth checking it out to be sure. And we have a problem, a quick release that doesn't clamp together is basically useless. So I'm taking the idea from Thrustmaster wheels and we'll be using a small retention screw. So the first thing we need to do is drill a small hole into the assembled quick release. That seems to have done the trick, uh, just this single small screw is enough to hold the two parts of the quick release together. Uh, but we'll find out soon enough if this was sufficient. Um, so now we're ready to set this up on the rig. The quick release is the standard 70mm bolt pattern and I had no problems attaching it to my kit. Um, I think it looks quite the part, uh, so yeah, very tidy. So let's put this together and cinch down the retention screw. There is some wobble and that's hardly surprising. We'll only know um, how that affects the operation of the wheel and the force feedback effects once we're in game and we'll do that next. My title of choice is Dirt Rally 2.0, which I've been enjoying quite a lot since Codemasters added the VR update. A rally game is the perfect torture test for the 3D printed quick release. The constant movement and fighting the wheel is going to really put this to the test. I have two cameras set up, so if the quick release fails, we will capture that moment. The force feedback strength is set to the setting I use with my Q&R or metal quick release, so I'm not being any kinder with this 3D printed quick release system. We are using the 330mm OMP GP wheel rim, which weighs 900 grams. This is all important detail, the direct drive motor has to handle this mass, and then some to give me the strong force feedback that I like. And all that torque is going through that central point, which is the quick release. If you have any doubts of the strength of those forces, watch my tablet shaking on the right, uh, which is attached to the rig. Uh, forces from the direct drive motor are traveling through my 8020 SIM cockpit and shaking that tablet. And anybody with a 8020 SIM rig knows how solid they are. That is not flex, that is all just vibrational power uh, being translated through the, uh, through the metal structure. Uh, this is very impressive, the 3D printed quick release is holding up to the stresses. Uh, the slight looseness between the quick release connection is hardly noticeable in use. Uh, with no obvious effect of reducing the quality of the force feedback feel, um, at least in this rally driving uh, where the forces are not subtle. Uh, on track racing where there are finer force feedback details to be had, uh, some of those effects will probably be reduced or lost by not having a perfect solid connection between the wheel rim and the wheel base. And remember, we are only using a single small screw to hold the quick release connection together. So adding an additional uh, screw or two would probably help reduce the play. So if you're watching and waiting for this thing to shatter, sorry guys, um, that didn't happen. It held up over my two hour torture test. I'm sure we could push this 3D printed quick release past its limits by running the force feedback at 100%, uh, which is around double of what we are using right now. Maybe we'll look at trying that for a future video, but for now the 3D printed quick release is going to live another day. So at the end of the test, this is what the quick release looks like. It's more or less unscathed. Um, there's a few minor marks, uh, but no cracks or signs of fatigue that would indicate a failure on the way. Uh, so the 3D printed quick release uh, passed the rigors of this encounter with the direct drive motor. 
This isn't a suitable alternative to a metal quick release system, but as a proof of concept and to demonstrate the strength of 3D printed materials, it's an interesting study. It shows you can make uh, your own durable custom pieces and they can be very strong. As a sim racer with a 3D printer, I find it to be a very useful tool that opens up many opportunities for making interesting DIY projects. And there will be more to come from me. Uh, so if this sort of thing does interest you, don't forget to subscribe to follow my exploits. And I promise there will be more DIY projects in the future. And so this ends the 3D printed quick release versus direct drive motor video. So I hope you enjoyed this one and don't forget to hit the like. And I will be back soon with something new, so stay tuned, happy simming, and bye bye for now.